Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here and to see so many interesting people join us. And my introductory lecture, I will try to present, a, I hope, simple and quick summary of the history of the debate and the main arguments for the different position while introducing the possibility of using correspondence analysis on archaeological data as a possible tool to combine with radiocarbon to possibly overcome or try to address the problem caused by the ambiguity in radiocarbon dating on the one hand and uncertainty in archaeological dating in the other hand, ideally. <laughs> so the debate on the date of the Aminoan eruption started soon after the first excavations in the uh, late 1870s, uh, 1860, 1870s, when Ferdinand Fouquet suggested the, the dated the settlements at Terrasia between 2000 and 1500 BCE, while Emil Bournouf uh, at a meeting at l'Académie des Inscriptions uh, suggested a pretty earlier date for the event, around 2000 to 1800 BCE. And finally, Adrien de Lampere su uh, suggested um, the base of the parallels with the tribute bearers, uh, Aegean tribute bearer scenes in the Theban tombs in Egypt, um, which were dated to the New Kingdom, uh, suggested a date for the eruption between the 17th and the 15th century. Now, the situation evolved even further in the mid 1930s when Spiridon Marinatos found pumice that was assumed to be from the Santorini eruption at Amnisos in deposits that it uh, he related, uh, related chronologically to the Akralokhori cave findings. And on the basis of similarities between the objects they found at Akrokhori and those depicted in the Aegean um, tribute scene in the tomb of Senon Mut, dated to the reign of Queen Achepsut, uh, dated the eruption to around 15, uh, 115, <laughs> 1500 BCE, or in any case, no later than 1550 BCE, in his own words. And now, <clears throat> since the advent of radiocarbon dating during the second part of the 19th century and the, also the first part, the 20, 21st century, uh, this archaeological low chronology was questioned on the base of uh, the analysis or the statistical analysis of results from radiocarbon dating, leading to the scenario of the two, two conflicting chronology that Professor Dresen has already anticipated. And the main evidence for the archaeological chronology, the basic uh, evidence for the archaeological chronology, is um, consti so consists of three main classes of findings. <clears throat> the first one are um, uh, reworked and Im imported and reworked Egyptian or Levantine Egyptianizing stone vessels that were imported in the Aegean, most probably reworked on Crete, and then deposited. Uh, we, have found one, we have one from Akrotiri, Akrotiri um, 1800, and two jars from Mycenae um, shot graves. And they all come from contacts that precede, preceding the eruption event. They were all reworked before the position, so suggesting some time of use before the final, um, final deposition. And all the available parallels. Uh, for the original types, late date from the late, the end of the Middle Bronze Age to the Late Bronze Age in the New Kingdom. To... <laughs> Another kind of evidence is offered by pumice from the eruption, which has been found um, very widely in the Eastern Mediterranean. And at least a part of these samples have been analyzed by neutron activation analysis, and 29 of them turn out to be effectively from the uh, Santorini uh, Minoan eruption, and they all come from context well into the late Bronze Age, the 18th dynasty, most, most of them from Thutmose III to Amenhotep II. And uh, no Minoan pyramid was found in earlier context so far, or that this has been found is not being recognized. So this is an argument ex silencio, but still uh, offers a, a clear picture if no um, no new evidence will come out uh, that seems to suggest that the eruption has happened somewhere around the beginning of the new kingdom. The most important uh, argument is perhaps the Cypriot, Cypriot proto-white slip and white slip one pottery. 
that would be will be the object also of Dr. Erickson lecture. So I just briefly introduced <laughs> so, uh, classes of Cypriot, where they show a very clear chronological development in Cyprus. And this is repeated uh, very precisely in several sites in the Eastern Mediterranean, in particular at Tel El Dabai, Sabat Khalmi, that will be subject of the coming lectures. And uh, so the main question now is, was the Menon eruption contemporaneous with the beginning of the new kingdom, or what, did it happen in correspondence of the early, late uh, second intermediate period? And this is of crucial importance because uh, we know from several kind of sources, textual, uh, textually attested astronomical observation, uh, king lists, uh, and autobiographies of officers that uh, served under several king, that the new kingdom cannot be retrodated uh, beyond 1560, 1565, at the very, very earliest the hypothesis, and also many Egyptologists wouldn't agree with such a high date. Um, now, since the 1970s, in particular, um, this chronology has been questioned by the statistical evaluation of radiocarbon dates, mostly from Thera, but also other places in the Mediterranean, uh, suggesting an eruption date in the second half of the 17th century. And this seemed to be, to be confirmed, strongly endorsed by the publication in 2006 of a set of dates, radiocarbon dates from an olive tree branch, published by the eruption that were claimed to definitely close the debate once and for all. The situation eventually changed much with the introduction of the new uh, international calibration QR in K20, which includes a new annual resolution data set for the period produced by the Arizona lab. And as a consequence, the numerical ages of the Menor eruption are now shifted towards the 16th century, the middle of the 16th century. You can see here a comparison between the uh, results with the older core in uh, rosé rose, and uh, the new results in uh, blue. Mm -hmm. um, now, another possible issue that Jean advocated was the hypothetical presence of uh, volcanic CO2 contamination in the samples from Akrotiri. As a Gedanken experiment, we tried with Professor Mabus Gai to see what happens if we exclude the earlier tail, possibly contaminated by volcanic CO2, mm -hmm. and calibrate just the peak that we think corresponds to the eruption, but it doesn't solve the problem either. Uh, it, the, the results are even more concentrated towards the middle of the 16th century, but still it's not possible to exclude the earlier candidate in the end of the 17th century. And also moving aside of Thera itself, this uh, ambiguity in dating remains, for example, from Chasme Balarazi, uh, where the radiocarbon dates uh, distribute in two neat clusters that uh, are very clearly clustered around the wiggles and the changes in shape of the radiocarbon calibration cure. The later uh, cluster, which is possibly the one dating the, the event, gives results that range once again from 1610 to the whole uh, 16th century. <clears throat> and same uncertainty, same um, distribution can be observed also in many earlier radiocarbon dates from earlier period, like uh, early late Minoan first A, uh, late Minoan one A, sorry, and um, late middle Minoan three. And this is not by chance, because it's an effect which is produced by the shape of the QR and an accumulation of radiocarbon dates over short periods of time. This has been studied into depth by Adam Michinski and Danuta Michinska and published in 2006, and showing that when a number of radiocarbon dates is accumulated over a short period of time, and this period falls into a steep or very wiggly section of the, uh, the mm -hmm. calibration QR, then it creates a dramatic increase in the probability distribution of calibrated dates, which can be misleading. Uh, and this is exacerbated by preferential sampling because we all, of course, we all try to uh, seek for uh, good samples coming from secure context, but in doing so, we create a proper collector bias effect and which in Crete can be exacerbated by the fact that we have very few dates if compared to the rest of the Aegean and the Eastern Mediterranean 
uh, for the period from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age. And if we look at our distribution, we can see there's a high peak and high concentration uh, in late minoan 1a and late minoan 1b. The majority of dates come, of course, from these two periods. And we also can see two gaps in the distribution corresponding to the end of the early Neolithic and the transition between the final Neolithic to early minoan 1. And, but at the present state of evidence, we are not able to understand if these gaps are actually uh, in the, an indication of uh, population dynamics or just a, a data artifact caused by the sampling bias and the shape of the curve. Now, back to the argument, the subject of the um, dating, the volcanic eruption specifically, um, a very interesting work has been published by Charlotte Pearson in Italia and will be the object of uh, the lecture tomorrow. And to sum up, uh, the study has been able to identify four possibly possible very well dated events combining the ice core records from Greenland, Antarctica, and uh, frost, uh, the frost, the record of frost episodes in tree rings. And namely, the, the four options are uh, 1611 BC, 1561 BC, 1538 BC, plus 1524 it was not possible to be investigated in the ice to the bad preservation, but uh, shows a very, marks a very, very significant frost event uh, in the dendrochronological sequences. Uh, now, <clears throat> we could combine the evidence we have so far, we can see that is uh, a very nice convergence towards mm -hmm. the middle uh, 16th century uh, date for the eruption, which would fit with both the wiggle matching of the olive tree and the radiocarbon dating uh, for the later late minon was B and late minon, uh, late minon 1B for the minon 2 uh, periods, which are represented by the uh, red dots. Um, and they will, uh, they fit very well with the candidates, with the main candidates at 1562, 61-62. Now, uh, the wiggle matching for the radiocarbon date, excluding Thera for the period between middle minoan three and late minoan uh, two, uh, will show that the best fit is actually uh, in the period 1562 plus minus 20. But it, has, it must be observed that wiggle matching doesn't offer just one solution. It just it offer, it shows many possible different models. And so there are, again, possible earlier and later fits that may be uh, valid too. And um, this is, <clears throat> once again, uh, not even wiggle matching allows us to get rid of the problems in the curve. And so our contention was that we could try to apply archaeological correspondence analysis, and has been done, for example, at Varna, who would be the object of one lecture today. <clears throat> and because by providing an independently ordered sequence, a relative sequence, uh, we can draw a um, depth model from this seriation and try to use it as a prior both for Bayesian analysis and for radiocarbon wiggle matching. In order to check the possibility of this, uh, we, with the collaboration of uh, Charles Sturge, we tried to test, uh, do a pilot study on the, starting from the Knossos Pottery Handbook and adding other published contexts that will be explained in detail by Charles tomorrow. And we see that the correspondence analysis from Knossos returns a very beautiful parabola, which in correspondence analysis is representative of a good seriation, a good sequencing. Although we are not yet at the level of being able of uh, seriating each single uh, context properly, uh, while we're using <laughs> aggregate periods, we can obtain a very neat and clear chronological distribution. We can, you can see here. Now, once we get this nice CA chronology, the point is to translate it into a one-dimensional scale to use as a depth model. And to do this, there are several ways. Uh, one thing, one, one method we tried was simply projecting the scores of factor one that's been done. Usually this is done when uh, dealing with uh, findings that have at least some fixed dates, some known ages of starting or end ages, because the, re the relation between the parabola and factor one time is non-linear. Uh, so another, perhaps more 
interesting, more promising way to address and uh, is to use uh, polynomial fittings to draw different cures and uh, <clears throat> choose the best polynomial fitting by using Pearson correlation rank. And then at that point, project uh, the scores on factor one. And this allows us to obtain a linear time scale, the one you see here uh, on the left. And once we have this, we can, we are ready, we'll be ready to use it for, to collect new uh, samples for radiocarbon dating from selected context, and then run again the analysis with both Bayesian and uh, Monte Carlo wiggle matching analysis. And that be your. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, uh, yes, let's just simply see if there are any questions either in the hall or uh, online uh, for you just now. Thanks very much. Yeah. Not Mm -hmm. online. I must say, I'm uh, intrigued to hear more about the uh, CA analysis um, because I didn't understand it fully from your very <laughs> short, obviously, um, <laughs> presentation just now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we'll hear more about that in, in the comments. Yeah, it will. So that's good. The object, huh? Sure. Do you, do you press the microphone now? Please say your name. <laughs> yes, my name is Michael Kraus from the Turing University in Germany. Um, thank you very much. Uh, it is very interesting. Um, I have a question. Um, how you achieve the, the horseshoe in the correspondence analysis? Um, did you filter the data set before or came automatically? Well, no, we didn't filter the data set, but this is not all the data uh, it has been we have to make a selection that will be explained in detail by charles tomorrow because we had for this pilot study we started with just published data and made an aggregation of types and context and then just run the ca without filtering the data then we tried also some other with filtering the data but that i will i won't anticipate too much because the it's the object of charles lecture tomorrow Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Colin McDonald's again. Um, I think one of the big problems, obviously, you have at Knossos is that there isn't a single deposit of which all the material is mm. uh, published or available. Mm -hmm. um, uh, much of it having been thrown over the years or selected yeah. by the excavators to yeah. start with. Uh, how do you think this is uh, going to interfere with the CA analysis? <laughs> And um, uh, or will we hear about that more tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. We, we will hear about that more because there's a specific lecture exactly on this. Okay, but fine. yeah, you, you make a, a very important point, actually. And uh, you can even recognize to some extent the different classes of publication from the CA. Uh, so you see uh, this, some points are displaced and you go back to the original sources and you say you, you see that uh, for example, one is a big publication, one, another one perhaps is a, a just an oriented publication with a few selected types. And so you can see it in the CA and so Sturge tomorrow will show us how it's done. Good, thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to talk? Mm -hmm. It's not broken. <laughs> Running around the floor. So, <laughs> so Tom, Tom Rogan. So, did, am I correct in thinking you excluded the branch from from the from Akrotiria because of old carbon contamination? Uh, no, we we um, actually used the um, wiggle matching to try and take into account uh, the um, the red carbon dates from the olive tree ah. too, because uh, there is the doubt of uh, about the CO two contamination, but uh, even removing that from the data set. It, the feature doesn't change much. Yeah, listen, uh, can I just ask, because when really quick, 
the, you showed like a preferential concentration of uh, dates of late minimum 1A and late minimum 1B. What about minimum 3 b Are there any common 14 dates that you yeah, know, exactly. which could show Germany's post crimes? The, the middle minimum. Yeah. Now, Charlotte, what's it? Hang on. Hi, this is Charlotte Pearson. Um, well, I'm not quite sure if I'm answering this correctly, but I was the, the Maniatus study 2010, 2012, where they looked at all the, um, the radiocarbon dates from the structural elements of timbers at Akrotiri, and that might have some more. So dates for some of the, the for example, the, the two earthquake destruction layers prior to the actual eruption event, those destruction layers have quite a secure dating boundaries. So I don't know if that that is even relevant to the question. But, very, very. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, Well, thanks very much, uh, Tiziano. Um, so now I call upon Kraus Reicher and Clemens Schmidt to talk about the statistical evaluation of proposals for chronology of the Popper Age Cemetery of Varna. Mm -hmm. 